Hello everybody, this is Ralph Fletcher and this is Writing with Ralph. I'm glad to be talking about one of my favorite subjects with you guys for the next 20 minutes or so and that is writing and I hope that uh, we can do some writing together. Um, so let me tell you a little tiny bit about myself. Um, I live in New Hampshire where it's still pretty cold here at the end of March. Um, the grass hasn't greened up very much yet but some of the birds are migrating back soon. Um, today I'm going to go photograph these great blue herons at a rookery, which will be fun. And I did see some green shoots in the garden, so things are starting to happen very slowly. In other, in other parts of the country it's already um, a, lot, a lot nicer. Um, we're going to start these sessions by reading a poem or two. This is not about poetry, but poems are fun and they're nice to do together and share together because they can be read very quickly and um, so I'm going to read you guys a couple of poems and these are in this the spirit of spring <clears throat> this first one's called weeds it's kind of a funny poem <clears throat> weeds weeds in the sunlight swaying in the breeze weeds pollinated by hordes of hungry bees weeds softly whispering spilling secret seeds weeds multiplying weeds 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 Dandelion, ragweed, queen, ant's lace, weeds in my dreams, weeds in outer space, weeds on vacation, but more staying home, sneaky little weedlings sprouting in this poem. And sometimes when I write poetry or all kinds of writing, I like to combine forms that don't seem to want to go together. So I was thinking about a, a how-to form of writing and combining that with um, flowers, how flowers grow. So I wrote a poem um, called How to Bake a Flower. So I guess I was also combining the idea of cooking, too. How to Bake a Flower. Stir seeds into well-drained soil. Fold in a half cup live worms. Sprinkle in occasional rain until green shoots appear. Blend in sun. Mix with shade. Add a dash of moonlight. Simmer on low four to six weeks in the unhurried oven of summer. When the air starts smelling sweet, it's ready to be served, almost. Swirl in butterflies, whip in bees. And that's how to bake a flower. All right. So, um, like I said, it's really fun to talk to you guys about writing. And this is just not going to be a session on how to write. It's not like a, I'm not going to teach you guys how to write. It's more like we're going to write together and I'm going to try to build on what you're already doing in your classroom and, and maybe in home. Um, so this is my this is my office where I work. Um, I'll lift this up for a second. I'll just show you. That's um, some of my books over there and some of my books over here. And... Um, yeah, you can just see this is kind of where I do my work, and my one of my one of the kids I know said this is kind of a messy office, and he's right, but it's where I work, it's where I'm comfortable, and I want to be comfortable when I write. I want to be in a place where I'm comfortable. You can see here I've got like a comfortable writing shirt on. Um, I don't want to wear a shirt and tie where I'm kind of like you know feel like I'm formal. I want to be able to be in my skin and be comfortable where I am. Um, you know, you might think of writing as a school subject, but it's really much bigger than that. It's, to me, writing is a way of life. Um, you can write at home. You can write when you're on vacation. You can write when you've got 15 minutes uh, waiting to get in to see the doctor uh, when you go to a, for a doctor's visit. Um, and you might say, but wait a second now, Mr. Fletcher. I mean, why would you want to do all that writing? Um, and the answer for me is that writing is fun. Um, at least it can be fun. And I guess I want to talk to you guys about the kind of writing that can be fun. That's what we'll be focusing on in our times together. Um, now, one of my most important tools is my writer's notebook. Um, I've been keeping different kinds of notebooks for many, many years. Um, I've got a whole stack of them. I've got a whole shelf of them over here. Um, and some of these are, you know, they're they're all different kinds. This is the one I'm working on right now. I've got big notebooks, but you know, I've got something else I want to share with you, which is a, sometimes like when you walk around and you want to take a walk, you don't want to bring a big clunky notebook with you. It's heavy and it's kind of cumbersome. A better way to do it is to have a small notebook, 
I call this a stealth notebook. And what's cool about this is you can basically put this in your top pocket. Look at that. Away you go. And if something cool happens, you can pull it out. You can write down what happened um, while, during your walk and then put that back. And then when you get home, like the little ship can come back to the big ship and can you can transfer the information from the little notebook into the big notebook. That, that's what I do. Um, so, um, no, notebooks are important part of what I do. Um, I've written some books about it. I've written a book for kids called um, A Writer's Notebook, um, and I've written a book for uh, older people and in teachers and uh, breathing in, breathing out, keeping a writer's notebook. Um, so, um, so what do you use a notebook for? Um, well, you can use it to collect ideas. Um, you can sketch in it. I think of a writer's notebook as a personal place for you, and you don't need a fancy one. Um, so I have a question for you, and I want you to think about this. Is writing easy or is it hard? And you can just take a minute and tell the person that's in the room with you, maybe your parent or a brother or sister or your dad or whatever, tell them, is the writing easy or is it hard? See, the way I'd answer that question is that sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard. It's easy when I have a good writing idea. When I have a good idea, the, you know, the ideas just flow. Um, you know what I mean? But if I don't have a good idea, well, it's hard to write. And that's where the notebook comes in. Um, it's, a, it's a seed bank for ideas. You, you know, something happens to you, you say, you know what, I'm going to write about that, and I put it in my notebook. Um, because if you have a good idea and then you forget it, then what are you going to do then? I mean, you really want to keep those ideas because they're valuable. Um, and I, I put all kinds of things in my notebook. Sometimes I put um, serious things, like when my dad had um, kidney disease, I wrote about that a lot. Or very emotional things, like when my son Robert was born, and it was a really um, amazing time in my life to have a new, a new baby. And so almost every one of my notebook entries were about uh, being a, a new dad. Um, and then I put some funny things in there. Sometimes I use my notebook as a, as a scrapbook. And um, we went to a place where <laughs> the kids could have their faces morphed into any animal they want. So my son, Joseph, loves cats. So you can see what he did there. He made himself into, made himself into cat boy. And that is kind of freaky. He looks a little too comfortable in that little cat body. Um, so anyway, um, so my notebook is, um, is, is valuable in that regard. Now, um, I was going to tell you that sometimes I put in funny things people say. Um, I'll take this notebook over here. Um, my son Joseph that I just mentioned, when he was a little boy, we used to love to play football together. And we used to like devise all these plays. Like he and I would be on one team, would play against this imaginary other team. And one of our favorite plays was called Confucio Unusual. And it was a way that we would like kind of trick the other team. Like I'd give the ball to him and he'd start to run and he'd throw it back to me. And then I'd fade back and I'd pass a long one to him and he'd catch it and score a touchdown. So that was the the thing that we always love to play, Confucio Unusual. And, you know, that's like a silly idea, but maybe it could be something I could write about. You know what I mean? And once I've got it in my notebook, um, I've got it forever. Now, one time um, I was reading to my son, and we read this book. Every night we read this book, um, Bitter Bananas. It's like an African folktale. And um, so Joseph um, loved this one page that mentioned Twilight. Um, on this page over here, gradually the darkness faded into twilight. And Joseph would say to me, Daddy, what is twilight? And he was like four years old, I think, at the time. And I'd say, well, twilight's kind of funny. It's not quite day. It's not quite night. It's in between. And then the next night, I'd, he'd ask me to read this book, and we'd get to that page, and he'd say, Daddy, what is twilight? And so um, one day this line popped into my head, and the line was, with invisible arms, dawn erases the stars from the blackboard of night. With invisible arms, dawn erases the stars from the, from the blackboard of night. And I said to myself, you know, that's a pretty good line. So I wrote that in my notebook. Um, I found a place and I just started like, I wrote that line and I just started gathering lines about twilight. 
you know, um, I like to write about things that are ordinary but also mysterious. And Twilight is kind of like the crack between those two worlds. And I started playing with an idea. Maybe it could be a picture book idea. And then I like the idea of Twilight twice with the twist sounds. So um, I wrote and wrote and wrote. And um, eventually that turned into one of my books. Let me just go get it. Um, I'm going to read you uh, this book, Twilight. Twilight comes twice. Um, and I, this was, book was illustrated by Kate Kiesler. And I just thought I'd take a minute and read it to you guys. Twilight comes twice. I dedicated this to my friend Carol Wilcox, who brings light to so many children. Twice each day a crack opens between night and day. Twice twilight slipped through that crack. It stays only a short time while night and day stand whispering secrets before they go their separate ways. Dusk is the name for evening twilight. Dusk is the signal for night to be born. Dusk deepens the colors of ordinary things. Even the common grass takes on a luster that makes you stop to look. In the summer, dusk hisses on the sprinklers. It flushes up millions of mosquitoes and armies of bats to eat them. Fireflies appear, swim in the, swimming in the air, writing bright messages in secret code. Slowly, dusk pours the syrup of darkness into the forest. Crows gather in the trees for last-minute gossip before nightfall. In the park, dusk will let the, will let the kids finish, if they hurry, the Little League game and the baseball diamond. Two fishermen stand at the edge of a lake, casting far out into fading light. Streetlights flicker on in the deepening dusk. Trains bring people home hungry and, dark and tired from work. Dusk prepares for the great celebration of night. It sets the table carefully, Venus, a few stars, perhaps a crescent moon. When the sky is full and singing with stars, you know that twilight has given way to true night. Now you're going to see a switch in the book, and you're going to recognize this one line. In the early morning, a pale twilight touches the edge of the sky. It is called dawn. Dawn is like a seed that will grow into daylight. With invisible arms, dawn erases the stars from the blackboard of night. Soon just the moon and a few stars remain. And you guys remember, that's the line that I started with that became the seed for this book. Dawn picks bits of dark from between the blades of grass in your backyard. No job is too small. In the forest, Dawn drinks up night's leftover darkness, the great black pools and deep-rooted shadows. Walking at Dawn is a special kind of walk. Sounds ring out more clearly. The air is still moist from the cool of the night, and your own skin feels all tingly clean. Dawn signals the crows to start their jabbering. What a racket they make in the willow tree. Down below, three robins hop through wet grass, shopping for breakfast worms. By the way, you notice I wrote down three robins? But look at this, I count one, two, three, four. What's the deal? Spiders rouse themselves, still stiff from the night, and go to work repairing their dew-spangled webs. Dawn slowly brightens the empty baseball field, polishing the diamond until it shines. At the lake, a boy sits quietly, trying not to disturb fish coming up to feed. Streetlights flicker, flicker off. A delivery truck leaves a bundle of newspapers on the sidewalk. Outside the bakery, the smell of donuts makes your stomach rumble and growl. As you set your table for breakfast, Dawn sets its own table with light that ushers in a brand new day. The end. Alrighty. So there you go. So that's one of the ways that I used uh, my notebook to help germinate that book. All right. Now, um, I would like to switch gears for a second because we're doing a lot of talking about Ralph Fletcher. And I'm really talk, I really want to talk about you guys as writers. I want to get you thinking about writing. I want to get you writing. We're going to be doing some writing every, every time we get together because that's what it's about. It's one thing to talk about writing, but we, I really believe that you learn how to write by doing it. So 
I'm going to read you a short poem, and I'm going to ask you to maybe use this poem as a springboard in, into your own writing. So let me read you this poem. It's, a, it's pretty short and it's pretty simple. It's a memory from when I was a, a little kid. Sometimes I remember the good old days, sitting in the kitchen floor with my brothers and sister, each in our own square of cool linoleum. I'm fresh from the bath, wearing baseball pajamas. Mom gives us each two cookies, a glass of milk, a kiss goodnight. I still can't imagine anything better than that. What I would like you guys to do is to borrow my first two lines. Sometimes I remember the good old days. And then I'd like you to write your own memory. Whatever comes up. And you don't even have to write it as a poem like I did. You could write it as a little story or a paragraph or whatever. So you'll start off, sometimes I remember the good old days. And you put your own memory here. And you'll, you'll end it, I still can't imagine anything better than that. So, okay, you've got the beginning, two lines. You've got the ending. And it's your job to supply the, the main part of the, of the piece of writing. You can almost think of my... My poem is like a wave, and you can like ride the wave of my poem, and maybe it'll take you to a new place. Hopefully, you'll come up with your own piece of writing that you can be proud of. And um, I'm speaking to the to the students in the room, but also, you know, there are parents and adults in the room that also, believe me, they've got lots of memories of the good old days. And um, so I invite the parents also, the, the adults, to, to take a crack at the writing um, themselves. All right. Well, that's pretty much our time together. Um, this has been really, really great to have some time with you guys. And I think that, you know, we live in a kind of a crazy time right now where all of our routines are disrupted. But writing can be a way to settle us down, to focus. And um, as you'll see in the next session, we're going to also be talking about how writers do a lot of playing around when they write. So, Anyway, thank you very much. This has been Writing with Ralph, Session 1. And um, I hope that you guys will join me for Writing with Ralph, Sessions 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.